A decade later, the death of Amy Winehouse is still referred to by many as the greatest loss that the music industry has suffered in recent times. With a voice beyond her years, outstanding musical prowess and a life more similar to a Shakespearean tragedy than anything else, Amy Winehouse certainly earned her spot in the Troubled Artist Hall of Fame. Hello everyone and welcome to True Celebrity Stories. In today's video, we'll be telling you all about the tragic life of the modern music icon Amy Winehouse. Needless to say, her story is a tale of talent, rebellion, love, lust, addiction, abuse and ultimately death. But before we jump in, make sure to subscribe to our channel and give us a like. Amy Jade Winehouse was born to her father window installer turned taxi driver Mitchell and her mother pharmacist Janice Winehouse on the 14th of September 1983 at Chase Farm Hospital in Gordon Hill, Enfield. For most of her childhood, Amy lived together with her parents and older brother Alex Winehouse in the Southgate area of London where she attended Osage Primary School. Growing up, Amy was often surrounded by members of her extended family from both sides who all seemed to have a shared love for music. Many of her uncles on her mother's side were professional jazz musicians and her paternal grandmother Cynthia was a singer who dated popular English jazz saxophonist Ronnie Scott during her glory days. Taking Amy's strong musical background into consideration, it didn't come as much of a surprise that she began to develop a fondness for music at a very young age. When Amy was only nine years old, her parents got divorced and in this tumultuous time, she found solace in music, further cementing her love for the art. During this period, her grandmother Cynthia suggested that she attend Susie Earnshaw Theatre School to not only help harness her vocal talent, but also to help get her mind off things. While at the Susie Earnshaw Theatre School, Amy developed an interest in girl groups and ended up forming a salt and pepper inspired rap group called Sweet and Sour. Sadly, the group was short-lived and was disbanded almost as quickly as it was formed. Her time at the Susie Earnshaw Theatre School convinced Amy that her passion for music was more than just a passing whim, so she went on to seek full-time training at the Sylvia Young Theatre School. For a few years, Amy remained at the Sylvia Young Theatre School, where she displayed the characteristics of a musical genius learned how to play the guitar, and began experimenting with songwriting. However, she was allegedly expelled at the age of 14 for getting a nose piercing and failing to apply herself. After getting kicked out of the Sylvia Young Theatre School, Amy quickly fell back in line and went on to attend the Mount School, Mill Hill and the BRIT School in Selhurst, Croydon, and all seemed to be well again. Unknown to most, the forbidden nose piercing that allegedly got her kicked out of the Sylvia Young Theatre School was not only the beginning of a rebellious streak that would eventually cost her her life, but also a testimony of what was to come. When Amy turned 16, she decided it was time to put all the musical education she had acquired into good use, so she began her professional musical career performing in bars and clubs and recording demos using her own sound, lyrics and vocals. It was one of these demos that was passed on by her then best friend pop singer James Charles to his record label a and that got her signed to Simon Fuller's 19 management in 2002 with a weekly salary of £250 against future earnings. While this was in itself quite an achievement, it was merely the start of Amy's multi-award winning music career. Barely a year later in 2003, when the English singer and songwriter was only 20 years old, she released her first album titled Frank, which was named after her idol Frank Sinatra. The album, which featured songs written by Amy herself, was greatly influenced by jazz and her lyrics told the story of her alcoholism and knack for indulging in various vices. The album Frank received critical acclaim, it topped many charts, the UK album chart included, bagged a handful of awards and earned Winehouse the six-figure check which she used in the purchase of her first apartment in London's Camden neighbourhood. In true Amy fashion, it didn't take long for the young artist to acquaint herself with the local Camden scene, especially the bars in the area since she had nothing else to do except work on her music. It's believed that it was on one of her tours of the neighbourhood that she met video production assistant Blake Fielder Civil, who later turned out to be her most dangerous addiction. Dating back to her teen years, thanks to her collection of tattoos, piercing and rebellious acts, Amy was regarded as one to be found among the wild things. However, it wasn't until she met and began dating Blake Fielder Civil that she was introduced to heroin and the dangers of substance abuse. 
In next to no time, the pair's relationship earned recognition for being abusive, impulsive, chaotic, and was punctuated by one too many breakups and Blake going in and out of prison. Career-wise, Amy was gradually diversifying her sound and had become a household name. Following the release of her first album, she took an interest in the girl groups of the 1950s and 60s and began experimenting with their sounds and appearances. It was at this time that she began creating her signature look, complete with Cleopatra-style makeup and beehive hairstyle. In 2006, Amy released her second album, Back to Black. Shortly after its release, Back to Black went on to top the UK albums chart for two consecutive weeks and become the best-selling album in the UK of 2007, selling 1.85 million copies during the course of the year. One of the notable songs in the 11-track album was Amy's hit song, Rehab, which addressed her manager's request that she get checked into a rehabilitation centre and her prompt refusal to do so on the grounds that her father believed she was fine. In the release sense, Amy was far from fine and it didn't take long before evidence of this fact was put out there for all the world to see. Back to Black catapulted into Amy into stardom on an international level as the album advanced from topping charts locally to climbing international charts. Little did she know that as her fame grew, so did the audience who would be around to witness her fall from grace. While Amy's career was blossoming, the same could not be said about her relationship. In 2007, Amy and Blake got back together for the umpteenth time and a few months down the line, they proceeded to secretly tie the knot. On the outside, things appeared to be going smoothly and the pair seemed to be crazy in love. Unknown to the public, between the public makeout sessions and matching tattoos of one another's names, Blake had introduced Amy to hard drugs. Proof of this was the fact that a few months into their marriage, Amy was rushed to the hospital after ingesting a deathly cocktail of heroin, ketamine, cocaine, ecstasy, whiskey, and vodka. Even before being hospitalized, following the death of her beloved grandmother, Cynthia, Amy had undergone severe weight loss, had begun behaving increasingly erratically, and had gone on to cancel show after show all over the continent, citing exhaustion as the reason and claiming that her doctors had recommended absolute rest. Needless to say, things only got worse after a hospitalization. Her addiction began to take its toll on her professional career, and it seemed there was no way to stop her downward spiral as the singer still refused to seek help. Instead, she chose to carry on as though nothing had happened. While Amy tried her best to appear unfazed by her personal woes, her erratic behaviors and breakdowns during performances, which usually led to her being booed off the stage, were telltale signs that she was dealing with her own demons. In the months following her hospitalization, in late 2007, Winehouse was arrested in Norway for marijuana possession and was photographed wandering around her neighborhood in just her bra and jeans, looking emaciated. Things were not going any better for her love interest, who earned himself a 27-month prison sentence for allegedly assaulting a bar staff in a bar he visited. In early 2008, a video surfaced online of Amy smoking crack cocaine after the contents of the video alongside an alleged failed drug test caused her to be denied entry into LA for the 2008 Grammy, where she won five awards, the singer decided to clean up her act. She checked herself into a rehab center at last, but her stay there was short-lived and as soon as she got out, she was back to her old ways. Winehouse claimed to have quit drugs, but that only meant that she had opted to drown her sorrows in bottles of alcohol instead, and not even the emphysema diagnosis she received in the summer of 2008 could stop her. In fairness to Amy, she had some good days where she managed to remain stable and sober enough to perform without any complications, one of such events being Nelson Mandela's 90th birthday concert. But the truth remains that in no time, the singer had set a record of cancelling more shows than she performed with her saving grace being that her previously released songs from her glory days continued to speak for her. Thanks to her previously released albums, Amy's stake in the industry remained untainted, so much so that in November 2008, she was named best-selling pop slash rock female at the World Music Awards, despite it all. In 2009, upon his release from prison, Winehouse's then-husband Blake Fielder Civil filed for a divorce from the singer, citing her infidelity as the reason for his decision. For the next two years, the world watched the multiple award-winning artists continue her downward spiral. Two years down the line in spring 2011, she checked herself back into rehab and upon her release, she attempted a comeback tour. But that went down the drain when she showed up for one too many performances inebriated. Many described her final performance in Belgrade, Serbia as a shambolic disaster. And barely a month after this disastrous performance, she died of accidental alcohol poisoning in her Camden residence. 
Upon further examination, it was discovered that at the time of her death, Amy's blood alcohol content was 0.416%, nearly six times the legal drink drive limit. Amy's passing meant that the world had lost yet another incredible talent to the 27 Club and it left fans all over the world heartbroken. Nearly a decade later, Amy Winehouse is still recognised as one of the best to ever do it. Needless to say, the troubled artist lives on through her music and was indeed the voice of a generation. What do you think about this legend's life? Tell us your thoughts down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.